Chapter 1. An Unexpected Detour Mike and Julia's Saturday morning was off to a slow start. The sunlight tiptoed through the slits in the blinds, stretching thin stripes across their comforter. Mike was the first to stir, his arms reaching up high as he let out a cavernous yawn. Bread. We need bread, Julia mumbled, half buried under the pillow, her voice muffled but clear. Yeah, Mike agreed, already picturing the golden crust of a fresh loaf. Let's take the scenic route, the one by the lake. It's a perfect morning for a drive. Julia nodded, her hair a wild tangle of agreement. Their car, a reliable old thing that had seen better days, hummed to life. They left the well-trodden path that led directly into town, opting instead for the winding road that hugged the lake's edge. Each turn revealed snapshots of nature, the water rippling in the breeze, the trees swaying in a silent dance, the mountains standing watch in the distance. Beautiful, isn't it? Julia said, her fingers skimming the air outside the open window. The best part of the road was the quiet. Out here, the world's constant buzz was just a rumor. It was just the two of them and the open road. Then the car hiccuped. It was a small thing at first, a stutter in the engine's purr. But then it coughed, a deep, choking sound that made Mike's foot falter on the gas pedal. The car rolled to a stop, its final shudder a sigh of resignation. Great, Mike muttered, his forehead creasing as he turned the key again. The car remained silent. He popped the hood and stepped out, Julia following. They both stared at the engine, a mess of metal, wires, and unfathomable components. Julia pulled out her phone, her brows knitting together as she searched for a signal. Nothing, she said, holding her phone up in a futile attempt to catch a stray bar of connectivity. A rumble approached from around the bend. They turned to see a truck rolling to a stop behind them. A man with a weathered face and a dusty baseball cap leaned out of the window. Car trouble? he asked, a friendly grin on his face as he got out of the truck. The man introduced himself as Carl, and with a few deft movements, jiggled the battery cable that had come loose. Happens all the time, he said, his voice a warm chuckle. The car roared back to life, and Mike clapped Carl on the back, gratitude lighting up his face. Can't thank you enough, he said. Carl shrugged, his smile easy. No problem at all. Enjoy your day. They waved Carl off as he drove away, and they resumed their journey to the store, the unsettling incident now just a blip in their day. Chapter 2. A Simple Gesture The rest of the drive passed in comfortable silence, with only the sound of gravel crunching under tires and the occasional chirp of a bird to break it. Julia's grip on the steering wheel relaxed, and Mike fiddled with the radio, finding a station playing soft, old tunes that seemed in harmony with the day. Pulling into the grocery store's parking lot, they were greeted by the familiar sight of townsfolk, wandering in and out, some nodding their heads in recognition. The air held the faint scent of baked goods and car exhaust, a unique perfume for a Saturday morning errand. Inside, the store was cool and quiet. The shelves were neatly lined with products, everything in its place. Mike headed straight for the bakery section, while Julia wandered off towards the produce. The mundane nature of grocery shopping was oddly comforting after the morning's unexpected event. It wasn't long before Mike spotted Carl again. He was examining a can of beans as if it held the secrets of the universe. Mike raised his hand in a casual wave and Carl looked up, recognition sparking a smile. He waved back before turning his attention to the shelves again. The encounter was brief, a simple exchange of polite gestures between near strangers. Mike grabbed a loaf of bread, freshly baked and still warm to the touch, and found Julia selecting apples with care. They checked out, making small talk with the cashier, and stepped back into the brightness of the day. The drive home was uneventful. They made sandwiches with the bread, crisp lettuce, and thick slices of tomato, enjoying their lunch on the back porch. 
The rest of the day was spent in quiet contentment. They read books, tended to the garden, and when evening came, they watched an old movie, laughing at the dated effects and dramatic acting. As night wrapped around their little town, the day's earlier troubles seemed like distant memories. They went to bed with the windows open, a soft breeze carrying the night's chorus of crickets and the distant hoot of an owl. Chapter 3. The Knock in the Night The darkness was deep, and the town was silent, save for the occasional bark of a distant dog. Mike and Julia were nestled in the comfort of their bed, the day's events a fading memory as sleep drew them in. The sudden banging at the front door shattered the night's calm. Mike's eyes snapped open. He glanced at the clock. It was past midnight. Who could it be at this hour? The banging continued, urgent, insistent. Julia stirred beside him, her voice groggy with sleep. What's happening? I'll go check, Mike said, his voice steady despite the unease that rippled through him. He padded down the stairs, the wood cool under his bare feet. The banging came again, louder, as if demanding attention. Mike approached the door, the peephole revealing the night's visitor, Carl. Mike hesitated, his hand hovering over the deadbolt. Opening the door, he was met with Carl's apologetic face, illuminated by the porch light. Sorry to wake you, Carl said, his hat in his hands, a sheepish look on his face. I need a favor. It's a bit odd, but I hope it's not too much trouble. Mike's brow furrowed. A favor? Carl glanced over his shoulder before continuing. I've got a bag with me, just some personal stuff. I'm making stops all night and I don't trust it to be left in my truck. Could I leave it here, just on your porch, to pick up in the morning? Mike was stunned. It was a strange request, and the lateness of the hour didn't help. But Carl had helped them out that morning. After a moment's hesitation, he nodded. Okay, sure. Carl thanked him and placed a duffel bag by the door. It's just a change of clothes, he said, opening the bag to show a pair of jeans and a hat. If you want to see my underwear too, I can pull that out, he joked. Mike forced a laugh, but deep down, something felt off. Carl waved goodbye and drove off, leaving Mike staring at the bag. He closed the door and went back upstairs, where Julia was waiting, her arms crossed. What did he want? She asked, her tone sharp. Mike explained, and Julia's face fell into a frown. You let a practical stranger leave a bag at our house? It could be anything. It could be drugs. Mike knew she was right. His attempt to be helpful might have been a mistake. He paced the bedroom, his mind racing. After half an hour, he made up his mind. I'm going to check the bag. If there's something bad in it, I'll call the cops, he said. Julia nodded, her expression fraught with worry. Mike descended the stairs once more and approached the duffel bag. He unzipped it and saw the jeans and hat just as Carl had shown. Beneath them was another compartment. Mike's hands shook as he unzipped it. Inside, he found something that made his blood run cold. A severed human hand, its pallor stark against the dark fabric of the bag. Mike stumbled backward, his stomach churning. He fought the urge to vomit, his heart pounding a frantic rhythm. With trembling hands, he zipped the bag closed and rushed upstairs. Call the police, he gasped to Julia. Now. Chapter 4 a night of questions. The night air, once so still and calm, was now pierced by the wail of sirens as they converged on Mike and Julia's home. The flashing lights painted the bedroom walls in strokes of red and blue as officers swarmed the property, their faces set in grim lines. Mike recounted the story, his voice steady despite the chaos that churned inside him. The police listened, their expressions unreadable, jotting down notes in the glow of their flashlights. They took the bag as evidence, handling it as though it were a venomous creature. The contents were not discussed, but the weight of the officer's glances told Mike all he needed to know. It was bad. Chapter 5 Inexplicable Realities 
After a sleepless remainder of the night, the morning brought no relief. The sun seemed to rise with reluctance, and the chirping of the birds sounded more like a lament. Mike and Julia sat at the kitchen table, hands wrapped around mugs of coffee they didn't drink, their minds lost in a fog of what-ifs and why-did-we's. The call came mid-morning. The police needed them to come down to the station. There were questions that needed answering, faces that needed identifying. The drive there was silent, each lost in their own whirlpool of thoughts. The police station was a cold, utilitarian space, its stark walls offering no comfort. They were ushered into an interrogation room, the air inside heavy and oppressive. A detective entered, carrying a photograph. It was a picture of Carl. Mike felt a chill run down his spine. This is the man whose body was in the bag you found outside your home, the detective stated, laying the photograph on the table. Mike's mind reeled. It was the same man who had helped them with their car, the same man who had stood on their porch the night before. But how could that be? The image before him and the memories in his mind refused to align. The detective's voice snapped him back to the present. Can you tell us about last night? Did you see anyone suspicious around your property? Mike opened his mouth to speak, but the words caught in his throat. How could he explain the impossible? That the man in the photograph, supposedly dead, had been alive and at their door. His hesitation was palpable. The detective's eyes narrowed, a hint of skepticism creeping into his expression. The questions became more pointed, dissecting Mike's account with increasing doubt. Mike struggled to articulate the events, his story sounding more unbelievable with each word. He... he was here, at our house. He left a bag. The detective leaned in. Are you sure it was the same man? There was a clear undertone of disbelief in his voice. Mike's certainty wavered under the weight of the detective's scrutiny. His mind raced, trying to piece together the fragmented reality that lay before him. Yes, I... I don't understand how, but it was him. The room felt smaller, the air thicker. Mike's words stumbled over each other, a jumble of confusion and fear. The detective's questions continued, unrelenting, each one a hammer strike to Mike's faltering story. The interrogation ended not with clarity, but with a deepening fog of mystery. As they were allowed to leave, Mike felt the detective's skeptical gaze on his back, a silent question mark that echoed his own inner turmoil. Mike stepped out of the police station, somewhere he knew he would be returning to. The photograph of Carl etched into his memory. His mind was filled with unanswered questions, reality and impossibility intertwined in an inexplicable knot.